guys, here's a different one for the channel. I don't know how much of this I'll end up doing, but I figured this is one worth posting. What you're looking at there is a Henry X model chambered in the 360 buck hammer. So I just got this one probably about two weeks ago. This was definitely something I ended up becoming interested in that I didn't think I'd end up being interested in. You start looking at the ballistics of this cartridge for the size, it's pretty small and mighty. Um, I just got some load data from Hodgdon, so I'll go over some loading. Um, I'll share that data with you. Uh, we'll kind of go from there, but this gun right here has a uh, loophole 2 to 7 by 33 um, Freedom model. It has tally extra low rings. And I also ended up putting on a Grove Tech hammer spur as well as a Ranger Point uh, precision trigger, which dropped it from about six and a quarter pounds down to just about four pounds. Even the brake is cleaner. Even though the trigger wasn't bad from stock, it was heavy. Um, this Ranger Point's definitely, uh, it's worth $40 not too bad to install either and i also ended up getting the shim kit to tighten up the lever there was some side to side slop not as bad as um, my older marlin um, but i ended up using two of the four shims that they sent me and that tightened it up pretty nice i could barely fit a third in there so i just uh, opted to put a shim on each side um, but that's the gun overall um, let me show you the uh, ballistics on a box and we'll kind of go from there. Alright, here's a factory box of Remington Core Lock. Um, they're the, actually the ones that developed this cartridge. I believe Henry kind of worked with them on this, so this is good for you straight wall guys. Uh, in Pennsylvania we aren't um, forced to use straight wall except in special regulation area that uh, slug guns were required, so they just went to that uh, straight wall uh, cartridge this year so that's really helpful because shooting them slug guns is, is pretty brutal and painful and incredibly expensive so uh, 200 grain soft point that's their tried and true uh, core lock bullet uh, that's a bonded bullet you know it's certainly not a match grade bullet but at the end of the day it is absolutely tried and true they hold together they have great weight retention it's actually a really good bullet. It's incredibly underrated, um, but out of the box is 2180. I'm going to end up showing you guys the load data. You're going to realize there's quite a bit more left in this cartridge. This is actually pretty moderate, technically. So one of the cool things is when you read this, is it uses a standard 358 bullet. See, that's where they went wrong in the uh, 350 legend you know that's a proprietary bullet size uh, for a rifle that is uh, it technically uses a nine millimeter bullet and it's a little bit under 358 i believe these run somewhere around the 351 i believe um, i have measured a couple and i i know they varied slightly and i know the sammy spec actually was a was a pretty broad window but I don't believe you can use the 358 bullets in there unless you get the chambers reamed or something like that. Uh, I lost a lot of interest in that cartridge when I realized they uh, didn't use a standard 357, 358 bullet. And anyways, this is substantially better. It's faster with heavier bullets. So that's on the box, 2180 at the muzzle, and you're looking at roughly a... a 9.8 inch drop at 200 yards so when I show you the data that Hodgin sent me I think you're going to realize that you could probably get that drop down closer to six or seven inches would be my assumption you can really there's there's some room to play in this cartridge all right let's get to um, components for loading and the data that Hodgson sent me and I don't believe it's on their website yet so hopefully I'm helping some of you out because I know I was waiting as soon as I bought this. Alright guys so the number one thing you're going to need here is Hodgson actually calls out a large rifle magnum. Um, 
kind of shocked me a little bit thinking a regular uh, large rifle would make it work I'm assuming because most of these charges are compressed um, I'm just speculating that maybe that's why they're leaning toward this um, the powders that they call for like I said I will show the data here uh, shortly as soon as I go over what I'm using uh, I believe these powders are just a little bit slower burning than most magnum pistol powders so the powder that I'm using is CFE black this is actually the uh, the best performance and, and as a velocity um, accurate 1680 is second best at least uh, any Hodgden family of powders bullets that I'm using Hornady interlock 358 uh, 200 grain round nose the data that they gave me calls out uh, Remington core lock bullets I do have those as well but I'm actually going to save these for hunting I think they're a better bullet than Hornady especially when you're pushing them at these speeds brass that I'll be using you have lots of options you, know, you could uh, this is a 3030 case if you don't know it's 3030 case just shortened and uh, blown out kind of looks like a miniature 4570 and the overall length is 180 which is maximum case length to my understanding for straight wall specifications so like I said it looks just like a mini 4570 it's much larger at the bottom literally just looks just like a little mini 4570 huge rim on it uh, all of this brass is actual 360 buck hammer brass uh, I fired three boxes when I first got it I had a blast this thing's incredibly accurate even with a subpar uh, trigger so mine was like I said six and a quarter pounds out of the box definitely not amazing uh, that ranger point trigger is definitely going to help a lot and um, this is kind of where we're going to start right here and let me show you guys the data next so I'm sure you can see exactly why I'm going with CFE BLK for this round you're looking at 2342 with a 37 grain compressed charge I'll be going up to 37 and a half and 38 grains. All right, guys, here is 35.5 grains um, of CFE black. Now, what I'm doing here is I am doing uh, 34 grains, uh, 5 of 34 grains, 5 of 34 and a half, 35, 35 and a half, 36, 36 and a half, 37. 37 and a half and 38 now I know some of you guys are going to be saying well hey you know Hodgson says don't go over 37 grains you know that's their max well I'm comfortable going half a grain up to a grain over uh, worst case scenario if I start seeing pressure signs let's say for example at 36 then I stop it's really just that simple um, most of my most accurate loads in my bottleneck cartridges like 223, 65 grade more, 308, uh, 270, um, 338 federal, the list goes on and on. And especially one of my favorites, 450 Bushmaster, is I actually find over is where I'm getting most of my accuracy. And in the 450 Bushmaster, I was actually getting these like mild hang fires when I was under uh, book max uh, when I I think I'm a grain and a half over and I have zero hang fires unbelievable accuracy zero pressure signs uh, I ended up actually going to a small rifle magnum on that particular cartridge um, here is the weird coating that I use um, I still need 37 and a half and 38 uh, kind of spot the back of the primer so I know what I have it's not the best system it works for now but uh, overall length is 240 and uh, 
Hodgson calls for 238. But, as you can tell, I barely have any of the cantaloupe exposed. And these, uh, all these cases are roughly the uh, spec of 180. Now, one of the downfalls to this Remington case is they use a crazy uh, crimp. Kind of looks like a Lee factory crimp. And uh, they kind of squeeze the case into the cantaloupe. I actually prefer doing more of like a mild roll or taper crimp. Uh, that's my preference. So I'm going to take the uh, 35 and a half grain uh, charge and um, put it in a case. Now, I forgot to mention that every one of these uh, cases is, you know, obviously it's sized and um, got a slight flare to it, and the bullet just sits um, pretty much perfect in there, and uh, that's it. You know, nothing crazy here. Um, nothing out of the ordinary. I do want to mention that this is actually a 38 357 um, flare and expand die. So the only thing actually says buck hammer on it is the seating and the sizing die. And let me show you the die set I, I'm using. Obviously an RCBS 3 die set actually bought this directly off their website about a week ago. Uh, it's cheaper than anywhere else I can find it. I think they were selling it real cheap. Uh, my understanding is, is just because there was no load data yet, they probably weren't moving very fast. Kind of hard to reload something without data. Oh man, look how static. Ugh. It's the only darn problem with these really fine ball powders my 38 grain charge and I noticed when I got to 37 I had to adjust the seating stem down just a little bit to keep that same um, could keep the uh, same stem depth to get the uh, 240 and then I had to go down just another eighth of a turn at 38 I, I don't think pressure is going to be the issue with this cartridge I just think you're running out of room for powder unfortunately but that's okay um, so we're gonna go over how I set up a crimp all right guys let me show you the overall length just so you guys can see what I'm working with here so 240 is it perfect on all of them no they're plus or minus a couple thousands keep in mind these are a blunt nose uh, soft point not a real big round though. I'll bet you if this one catches on, it's gonna end up in the Smith & Wesson X-Frame with the 500s, 460s, etc. I know they put that goofy 350 Legend round in there. Um, so I don't know why they wouldn't do this one. All right, so here's what I do. Um, I usually measure The, um, the I measure the case mouth right there at the at the uh, tip, and I'm getting point three seven zero oh, three seven five zero. Put it in. I back off the die and then I back off the seating stem and you just put it in a tiny bit and tighten her down so that you don't you don't catch it at all all right and then I just run it all the way up because obviously 
I'm not big on seating and crimping in combination. I like doing them in separate steps. Back off your lock ring and just adjust, adjust your die down until you feel a little bit of resistance. Now, when I set up my seating die, I do the same thing. I run the case all the way up. Obviously, no bullet, no powder. I go until I touch the case mouth, and then I back off about a quarter or half a turn. So right now, I'm feeling the case mouth, okay? I'm just going to back off the ram. You can kind of see where I'm at right now, and I'm going to go about a half a turn to start and you can feel some resistance all right I'm gonna take a look at it and you can tell that there is a light crimp there well, let's measure it So I'm getting, and it's kind of tough to get the mouth and try to do this on camera, but um, I'll do the best I can. So you can see I'm getting about three and a half thousandths of crimp. And I can feel it. It's real smooth with my fingers. It's a nice little taper. I'm going to go for a little bit more. And I'm gonna cinch the ring down. This is probably gonna end up somewhere around the five eighths to three quarters of a turn or so. And let's give it a give it a crimp. All right. Now you can see that real good. You can see that angle. Kind of see the glare off there. Now let's measure this one. Let me try to get this measured the best that I can. Three sixty-six. I'm getting nine thousandths, and it's probably a little bit more. And that is really tough to measure, but you guys can see. I'm not doing a heavy roll crimp. This is probably be classified a little bit more as like a light taper. You know, you can do a heavy hard roll crimp, but you really just need to get that case mouth into that cantilever to hold it in place. Not that this is the highest recoiling gun, but it does recoil, and um, you need to hold that bullet in place. You don't want the bullet coming out. And once you uh, you know you make your final selection, you can tighten your uh, cedar die down. And now basically all I'll do is. Uh, finish all 50 of these and then I'll end up hitting the range and uh, I'll report back with velocities maybe in a real short video hopefully by next week so hopefully this helps anybody out that is looking for load data for the 360 buck hammer I think it'll be helpful for you I don't have any 180 grain data. I actually had to call Hodgden themselves to get that information. I didn't have anything. Um, I spoke to a gentleman by the name of Luke, and he was incredibly helpful. Uh, sent me a screenshot of the uh, data that he got from his ballisticians there, and um, he was, you know, nice enough to forward that along to me. I'm also part of a Facebook group. Uh, 360 Buckhammer actually shared that data on there as well but as far as I know I don't believe this is on Hodgson's website yet and uh, like I said there's no 180 grain data if you have FTX bullets as well the 200 grainers 
you you'll probably want to I think this data will be okay but maybe you just want to start a couple grains maybe start on the low end and you know kind of work your way up there's no reason to be pushing it right out of the gate like I said I'm, I'm going to load up to a grain over max I'm doing half grain increments um, it's not like this is a bottleneck cartridge or something and I'm looking for low SDs and ESs and all that it's really just going to be a, a fun gun a hunting gun and uh, don't need to don't need to do in two tenths uh, increments like I usually do. Um, but hopefully this is helpful for anybody that was uh, looking. All right, give me some feedback on what you think about the 360 Buckhammer. Talk to you later.